Examination can be likened to a sailor's compass when it comes to assessing our proximity to the desired destination. Examination, the true test of knowledge. Education is said to be a process of teaching and learning. The effectiveness of this process is usually evaluated through an examination. The purpose of this examination in any learning process is to assess, evaluate, and for accreditation. It can also be used for selection, placement, certification, and promotion. While it is often said that examination is not a true test of knowledge, we must, however, agree that there has not been a better way to test a student's understanding of a subject matter. In Nigeria, the last four to five decades have witnessed an alarming rate of increase, increase in incidents of examination malpractices, especially so for public, publicly conducted examinations at the secondary school level. Evidence abounds of increasing incidents of misconduct by students, often in collusion with teachers, school proprietors, invigilators, security personnel, and surprisingly, parents. Aside the increased rate of uh, misconduct, also worrisome is the rate of failure on public exams, NECO and WAEC. In the recently released result for 2019 exam period of the West African Examination Council, WAEC, only 64.18% of about 1.5 million candidates have five credits and above, including math and English language, in the May-June diet examination, while only about 35.1% of almost 100,000 candidates have five credits and above, including mathematics and English language, in the November-December diet, which is the private candidate diet. The death of reading culture, declining standards, inadequate funding, and decayed infrastructures are some of the reasons attributed or attributable to this failure rate. To stem this, students have resorted to self-help by involving in every form of malpractices imaginable. Private school proprietors have also cashed in on this by organizing special or magic centers where students are promised amazing results even without the needed preparation and effort. Some parents are also fond of making special arrangements for their wards to have an undue advantage during exams. Same with security personnel who connive with school principals and parents to allow impersonation of candidates. The dare consequences and implication of this phenomenon are already being felt in every area of our national life. Today, Nigeria is producing a largely unemployable set of graduates that cannot compete with the rest of the world much as we like to complain about the rate of unemployment, we must also be worried about the caliber of unemployable graduates our educational system is churning out. Also, exam our practices renders our certificate worthless in terms of institutional, national, and international standard. While hard work is sacrificed on the altar of mediocrity, talents are left untapped while discipline, honesty, dedication, and even self-actualization are pathetically compromised. Though Nigeria is a signatory to UN Sustainable Development Goal 4, which strives to ensure inclusiveness and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all, sadly, our government has failed to fully commit to this laudable goal. Education budget for the year 2020 is a paltry 6.7%. Government needs to invest heavily in education value chain if we must overcome this calamity gradually befalling us. To be honest, what's there to argue with? You know, what's there to disagree with? You're, you're absolutely right. There are a lot. Oh, is there? There are a lot. Yeah. Okay, maybe you, should go, maybe you should go first, since you have a lot. Yeah, because um, mm. um, what, I, what I gathered from your uh, opening is that, um, you know, examination is leading to a decline in uh, employability of our graduates. I, 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 I beg to disagree. Mm. Rather, it is the quality of education that is leading to examination of my practices. There's so much emphasis on the paper rather than the content. And, and so when there's that emphasis is misplaced, people are going to do everything possible to ensure that they just get out the paper. And, and so it's immaterial how you get it. Just get it, even though you can't defend it. So I like the last part, invest in education. 
not just the Western education that we all know. There are so many, even the, those Western education, and they are also diversifying education to other areas. And, and so if we look at it broadly, you'll be able to tap knowledge, agree, test knowledge, to even know where the child fits in. A situation where you see a child who is very good in football. Yes, they say yes, but you must go to school, take some basic classes. But let's groom you in this area. And like I saw in one school curriculum, here we do not, we cannot make a fish to fly or make a bed to swim. So there are some people who are not fit for that your classroom, but we want them to go to that classroom. Mm -hmm. And because there's so much emphasis on that paper, they go there without necessarily passing through there. They bring out the paper and you say your education has... has Actually, started. I mean, uh, I spoke to uh, someone who consults for the education sector, particularly in Lagos, and mm -hmm. the number of things he said, I'll try and just give a few examples right. to sort of buttress some of the points you've made and Libros has brought out. Mm -hmm. One, he said that, you know, it's not the policy, it's the policy, the way the policy is enforced that mm -hmm. usually falls our hands, so to speak. So the example he gave was that they devised a policy because we didn't have enough laboratories where they say you can do a look like, you know, sort of a comparison, I don't know what they call it, a, a lab alternative. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have the actual lab, but you do so, show with the theory that Maybe. this is what you would have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alternative mm -hmm. to practicals. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But the people, so there's a budget to still put labs, but they now defaulted to making the alternative practicals the default. So they will now, rather than invest, now you now find that Almost everybody does a, an alternative practice rather than a practical exam. Mm -hmm. And the money for the, <laughs> to put labs in place is misplaced somehow. The other thing he said is that even though you have a budget for the primary and the university education, there's nothing for the, the midway. So a lot of children fall out. So you find that only 1% of uh, population end up in the tertiary education, which, you know, because a lot of them fall through the gap between that primary and secondary. And, and, and there's no provision for maybe for other skills or anything. And, yes. Yeah, and then obviously he mentioned the poverty because he was hearkening to Aisha Buhari's statement recently in the news that the North are trailing behind in, the, in terms of out-of-school students. People assume, well, oh, he said no, but the Northern people have a, a, a culture of education that they're scientists. But, you know, you, somehow the system is failing them, but isn't it failing all of us? Because you're saying who in Nigeria really has the quality of education? We haven't even come to exam malpractice, mm -hmm. but we're saying that the quality is not inspiring. Mm -hmm. The investment is so poor. The teachers are not inspired. So and you're taking, even he said, the, the people who go into teaching at the, the lower at the lower rung of yeah, you right. know academic performance, so you're really already dealing with people who are not motivated or even they don't have the knowledge to pass on. In the, so when he, by the time he listed all these things, you just looked at yourself and you said to yourself, well, "Where do we even begin?" Not to mention like the fact that we're doing six percent when other mm -hmm. countries are doing twenty percent of their budget. Well, you know what, what what is going wrong here? Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's about investment in education and also because we see that it's the people who aren't even really all that well educated that are getting, you know, getting quite far in yeah. our system. Mm. You know, we can see our okay, political so class. Yeah, yeah, so there's nothing that motivates anybody to, to, yeah, to, to want to focus on education. Also, the government tells us that. Um, they don't see education as something as that is, uh, yeah, exactly, as a priority. They're not investing in it. If you're not investing in it, do you think that then the people well, that are... said that when they invest, they, they focus, their budget mainly, 80% of it is paying salaries yes. and also building schools. Mm. But he's saying that they're not even directing it at training staff. Exactly. They don't even know where to make the mm. investment. Because the budget is yeah. so, so they don't care. They don't care that, you know, most people that come out of our education system are not actually fit no. for, for purpose. They don't care about that. They're not interested in investing, maybe because it actually works to their advantage. Because, like earlier today, we're discussing how it's um, it works in their favor to keep the masses uneducated. Yeah. So we are beginning to see that they're not interested in education for several reasons and some sinister. So I'm really so beginning what's, to what's to be done. And to me, to to add to what mm. um, Sedu has said, mm. because the uh, the, the education uh, person you spoke with said that gap in between secondary and primary mm. and the university tertiary. So those people that fell out, because there's no budget for them, they will rather cross into this by tertiary hook by, by hook or by crook. Mm. And they, since there's emphasis on the paper, just get the paper anyway. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is a holistic approach. Look at increase the investment, create opportunity for that gap that so that you don't need to go to that university by hook or by crook. Mm. Whatever place you find yourself, you'll be catered for. I remember those days for you to even be a weather. You must get city and yeah. gate. I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe we're back to where uh, institutions, private institutions will have to create this kind of Capacity. apprenticeships. Yeah. Mm.
I, the advocacy I was trying to make is calling government's attention yeah. to the dare emergency we have in the yes, education sector. Do. There is a need for government to invest heavily in the education value change, value chain from capacity building for teachers, infrastructure, and that whole system. So it's important that this problem, the problem of our education system has to be owned by all of us since it is a factory of our human capital reserve. After the break, Chuka tackles another problem that we must all own. And if we're to find our way out of what he terms a megacity confusion, Chuka, lead the way. <laughs>